Now that we've talked about a few different ways of solving systems of equations, let's, let's do some mixed practice where we have to look at a fresh example, not knowing what method would be best, and then make that decision and, and then try to solve it. So just to recap our three different options that we have for solving systems, you can either use a graphing method where all the, the equations in your system, you can graph them all, and then the solutions to the system would be where those graphs intersect each other. Um, you could use a substitution method where you solve for one of the variables and then substitute that expression into the other equation. You can do it that way. Or you can use something called either the elimination method or the addition method. It goes by different names. In, in different textbooks. So you can use that method where you uh, line up the different variables on one side of the equation or the other, then you add the two equations together and it eliminates either the X or the Y and you can do it that way. So I'll, I'll just be honest with you, this is, um, this is you know, just kind of a, a behind the scenes peek as to the way this usually works. Um, just being honest with you, the, the graphing method is not the best. Un unless you're asked to solve it by graphing on a random example, you're probably not gonna graph it. Okay, J just being honest. So that, that one's out for, for the vast majority of the problems we'll do. The substitution method you know, speaking holistically is going to be the preferred way. If, um, if all things being equal, if you can use the substitution method, that's the way we're going to try to do most of these. It's, it's the simplest, it's the least error prone, it's the fastest. Um, if you get into a situation where none of the variables have a coefficient of one, which means it's not easy to solve for an X or a Y to substitute into another equation, then we would go to the elimination method or, or the addition method. Now, that, that's, that's just informally speaking to you. Now, with that being said, you can often use either of these. You know, if you were just died and determined to use the substitution method, even if all your variables didn't have a coefficient of one, you could still make it work. If you really wanted to do the elimination method, you could probably do that too. But, um, but these, these are just my recommendations. All right, so let's try two examples and, and we'll talk about which ones we, we would choose, what method we would choose and why. So here's an example, uh, 2y plus x equals nine and 3x plus 10y equals 39. Now, it's not already in standard form because the X's and the Y's aren't lined up. We would need to shuffle some terms around if we wanted to do the elimination method, which won't be hard. I mean, we could do that if we wanted to. But see this guy right here. The first thing I noticed when I looked at this example is that X has a coefficient of one, which means I'm probably going to do the substitution method um, because that, that's going to be the preferred way of doing it. So what we'll do is we'll solve for that x. So in this case, x is equal to nine minus two y. I'm gonna subtract the two y to the right. And so this is what x is. x is nine minus two y. So I'm gonna take that expression and plug it in for this x right here. What that'll give me is one equation with one variable instead of two equations with two variables. So we had 3x plus 10y equals 39, but I'm gonna take out the x. I usually put blank parentheses. I'd recommend you do the same. And then insert nine minus two y. So if I can solve this equation for y, then, then I'll, I'll, I'll um, be you know, halfway done with the exercise. So I'm gonna go through the algebra kind of fast. Just this, this isn't really the point of this exercise. It's mostly I just wanted to talk about what method to choose, but we'll distribute the three, 27 minus six y plus 10 y equals 39. Combine like terms, 27 plus four y equals 39. Subtract 27 from both sides, they give you 12. And divide both sides by four, give you three. So I know I went through that kind of fast, but your y value would be three. I would take this guy and go back up to the equation that has X in it, plug in your Y so that you can solve for X. X would be nine minus two Y, but we just figured out that Y was three. So the X would be nine minus six, which would be three. 
So the solution to this system is 3, 3. And the method that we used was the substitution method, solving for one variable, substituting it into another. Now, before we go to the next exercise, if you want to do this another way, uh, I'm not going to do it, but another way you could do it is maybe um, reorder these terms and then multiply one of the equations, either the top or the bottom, by some constant to make the coefficients line up but have opposite sign. All right, let's try one more. All right, here we have 7x minus 2y equals 1. 3x plus 5y equals 18. Now this one, substitution would, would be much more difficult for this one because even though you could, uh, if you wanted to solve for one of these variables, you would inevitably have fractions because none of them have a coefficient of one. <clears throat> so for example, if you wanted to solve for this x right here, at some point you'd have to divide by seven giving you a one-seventh or a two-sevenths or, or things like that. Then you're substituting fractions and, and you can do it, but just the, the arithmetic will be a, a little messier. So I think for this one, let's try the elimination method. Let's try to make the coefficients of either the x or the y line up, be the same, except have the opposite sign. So we, we either want to make 7x and 3x look like the same coefficient, or negative two and five. Doesn't matter to me which, we'll, we'll just pick one. Let's, um, let's go with the y's, let's try to make the y's line up. So I'm gonna multiply the top equation by something. Oh, let me back up. Actually, first thing we need to see is, is can you make negative two look like a five by multiplying it by something? No, we can't. And you can't make a three look like a seven or a seven look like a three very nicely. So what we're gonna need for this one is to multiply both equations by something so that they're uh, <clears throat> both equal to some larger number. I think we could multiply the first equation by five, which will give us a negative 10. And then we can multiply the second equation by two, which will give us a positive 10 for y. Make sure to equally do this on both sides, five on the left side of the first equation and five multiplied on the right. And for the second equation, two multiplied on the left and on the right. So this would now be 35x minus 10y equals five, and 6x plus 10y equals 36. Remember, you want the same coefficient, but the signs have to be opposite. That's very important. The signs need to be different. One's a positive, one's a negative. Draw our line. We're going to add these two together. That's why they call it the addition method. And then when you add these two, the minus 10y and 10y are going to cancel. So that's why some people call it the elimination method. You eliminated the y's. You would get 35x and 6x make 41x equal to 41. So x would be 1 and then use that x to go find the corresponding y that goes with it. Uh, I would just use the first equation maybe, seven minus two y equals one. So you can solve that. I think that would reduce down to y being three. So you can check my algebra on that, but that would be the solution to this system. So hopefully those examples help you better understand how to solve systems of equations using different methods.